for a third time in Division Three history. We have perfection. And for a first time, the Blue Jays at Johns Hopkins at 35 and 0 are national champions. My initial impression of them was they were very talented. For me, it was almost more of trying to figure out their environment and what they were used to and not changing too much right away. He worked really hard to get to know us and to get to know kind of the flow of the team and to like work around us and center everything around us. I think the best thing about Matt is him coming into the program wasn't him being the super imposing coach of, okay, I'm here, this is how I'm gonna run things. It was, I'm here, how do you guys do things? How can we work together to make this the best experience possible and the most successful experience possible? Like I, I knew that we could win like in the spring. I told Matt, like in his office, I think it was our, our end of spring meeting, I told him straight up, if there's a year, like this is the season, like this is the season to for us to win. For me, it clicked after our spring play day um, at GW, just completely dominating. <laughs> like it was so much fun. I remember calling my mom, like you have to watch the film on Huddle. Like we play very well together and we have a lot of young talent and it's only gonna get better as we keep working on it. I still remember on my interview, that was one of the main questions was, do you think you could help us win a national championship? And, you know, of course I felt like I could, but I, I felt like in the spring, we were certainly a team that could go to the Elite Eight. They reminded me a lot of my Mary Washington team that went to the Elite Eight with, um, you know, even some, some taller pieces. You know, they were a little bit bigger in, in certain areas. And for me, it's once you get to Elite Eight, anything can happen. You know, and so that was my goal with them was, let's see if we can just get this to where we get to the Elite Eight and then, you know, we'll continue to take it one one game, one practice at a time. But I, I felt back in the spring, we, we certainly could make a run. This was really, really special and I'm really glad I was able to be here with you. And I think in, li in listening to kind of the observations, what I keep coming back to, and I alluded this to alluded to this a couple weeks ago when I stopped by your practice is that you guys are very authentic like who you are is who you are and that comes through on the court you don't get flustered you back each other up it's it you can tell what the trust level is between you that's why you're here my first impression obviously a small team <laughs> um i i wasn't used to that we had i think we had 18 on my previous team that i was working with um but that each and every one of them was like as dedicated as the person next to them what's funny is uh, i think pretty early on in the season matt sat us down and he was like let's let's list all of our goals that we have like are we gonna win regionals are we gonna win the conference and actually our team was like we're not gonna do that we're not gonna set those goals on ourselves we're gonna play our game, we're gonna hold each other to a good standard and it'll happen, but we don't need to sit here and be like, this is the goal, that's what's happening. I, I definitely don't think it was ever verbalized that being undefeated was any sort of goal. I think the goal was just to work together really constantly, continue executing the way we've been executing and honestly doing those things, um, I don't really think there's any any way the season could have played out other than being undefeated. I mean, it might have been in the back of our minds in some way. I think as it kept going, it was like, oh, wow, we, you know, we haven't lost yet. I don't know if, if I ever, I don't think I ever even approached the subject about it on it, about being undefeated. I don't really remember them talking about it, at least not around the coaching staff, at, um, you know, at least. 
For me, the huge turning point in the season was Juniata. If I remember correctly, that was probably our first, you know, top 10 team, or it was one of like, or it was like the highest of the season that we had played yet. And going in, I was like, like I hope this goes well. I don't know how it's going to go. The previous year, um, we didn't beat them, and it was it was noticeable that we weren't at the same, you know, caliber. And then, you know, we came out this year, and it was like a really good match, and we, you know, ended up winning. And I think that was like a big tell for all of us, like, hey, if we can beat Juniata, like, what's stopping us from taking the whole thing? I think I think getting the opportunity to play good, big, uh, physical, and talented teams. Uh, I think Juniata and Susquehanna come to mind. Um, just being able to go out there, play these really good volleyball teams and still be performing the way that we wanted to, not letting um, you know our opponent get to us and continuing to play our volleyball. I think that that showed you know we can we can do a lot of good things with this team. Set to the outside, slammed down by Lauren Anthony, and that'll do it. Here inside Gold Farm Gymnasium, a three-set victory for the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. They'll go to 23-0 on the year. Looking back on my Hopkins experience, I definitely think the success and just culture of like success uh, in the athletic department is something that's really special in the way that athletes support each other. I, I think it was fun watching the players come into the gym and seeing all of the NCA stuff up, you know, and the realization of, you know, they were hosting, um, you know, that, that was probably what I enjoyed the most. People have asked me since we've won the championship, like, what was your favorite moment? Was it the national championship itself? And I don't think it was for me. Like, it was playing in Gold Farm in front of our crowd with all of our fans there and just the community aspect of Hopkins because it is such a small school. Like, we had all of our friends there and professors and my family was there, which was awesome. So just that family vibe, I think, was the most special part for me and made it so much more rewarding when we were able to do it for them. Honestly, it was kind of funny because I think you know, had it just been volleyball going on, it would have been like, oh my gosh, it's a big thing, we're hosting the regional tournament. But because there were so many uh, games going on, it was kind of like a normal, you know, in-season weekend of, you know, oh, there's these games going on, just a whole bunch more teams actually there. Lauren Anthony has the serve to send the Blue Jays to the NCAA championships. It's an ace. Lauren Anthony aces Hopkins all the way to Cedar Rapids. The Blue Jays, for the first time in program history, are headed to the NCAA championships. Um, I think after we won the regional championship, Krista like pulled me aside and was like, uh, we need to chat like tonight. <laughs> and I was like, we do? <laughs> she was like, yeah, we need to chat tonight. <laughs> so she was like, we need to start booking flights. And I was like, Okay, so I think it was at that moment I was like, all right, like I'm just gonna try and get everything as organized as possible because this week is gonna be chaotic. And like the 48 hour turnaround on that is crazy. We had an idea of what their schedule was gonna be like. I wanna say it was getting close to finals, papers being due, things of that nature. And, um, you know, we were lucky to have Steve come along with us, um, you know, being our academic guy for the department. and. Um, so I think he he was able to to help be a liaison with professors and, and things like that for them, which I, I mean, he was a godsend with that. I mean, it was awesome. <laughs> we get such a blur. I think it's because it like was along with like the last week of classes. So it was, you know, you were either playing volleyball, sleeping or working. Well, that week was pretty tough for both Eleni and I. We actually had an essay that was due, I think the night before the national championship. So it was quite the student athlete experience, right? Because we're waking up for practice, but then I'm waking up two hours earlier to write an essay. And then I have Steve in my room reading my essay while I'm like, uh. It was, it was such a fun weekend. It was such a great weekend, but it was also like getting down to business and making sure that we had everything done off the court so that we could leave it all behind and just fully concentrate, fully prepare for whatever was 
gonna happen that afternoon. I've never, I've never played a more focused game in my life. I've never been more focused in any exam. There's no comparison. Like I, someone made a mistake out of my head. Like that's the most next point I've ever been in my life. So I'll never forget those feelings. I mean, it just seemed no matter what we did, even if there was one little mistake, it was an easy, quick turnaround. And all of a sudden we're making runs, you know, three, four or five points, whatever it might be. It, it's it's kind of weird because when you're in the moment, you just feel like you're playing point by point and you're really focused on, on the strategy and, and what you're trying to do. And, you know, when it, when you, when it's all said and done, it's like, whoa, like we just, <laughs> we just did that. After we had won, we like had like a little like party dinner situation. And I just remember everyone was so excited. Like none of us could sleep that night. And me and Lenny just like stayed up talking about it. And then I went and um, we watched the whole game with Simone and Natalie in their hotel room that night. We just all like could not stop like reliving it like right after it happened. I think what really will stick with me is going to be the things I admire about my individual teammates. I see each of them as such unique individuals, you know, each with characteristics that like I would also aspire to. The other thing I, I heard too was, you know, of the eight eight teams there, we were the we were the team that stood out the most as being different. Like how we went about our business, how we did what we did, and you know, I think that's a testament to the players. I mean, I wouldn't say that's anything that I brought in. Um, I just think that's the players, and that's who they are, and we allowed them to be who they who they were. never been part of a team that feels more like family. I mean, every team has felt like family, but none more than this one. We just became so close and like, because there's only 10 of us, so like we had to be, like there was no choice. People didn't realize that, you know, the group of 10 girls who are half injured can do whatever they want to do because we were a family. And I think that that's something really special that not a lot of volleyball teams have. That was the dream team. You know, there was so much trust and respect and love for each other. That whole season we were traveling a lot, on the road a lot, and that brings everyone closer significantly. Just getting to hang out with a bunch of really cool, really awesome players uh, was really fun. And also being able to play that high level of volleyball uh, for that whole season, I think is something I'll always be proud of. I've never had friendship like this in my entire life. I, these people are gonna be at my wedding, bro. <laughs> I think, I bet, you know, I'm, I'm imagining them being aunties to like my children. Yeah, it was, I never envisioned being on a team of less than 12 people. I don't think I ever have before. Um, and I know there may be many downfalls, but the one upside, and it's a really, really big upside, is how close we got and how much we use that to our advantage and in our favor and how well that worked out for us in the end. You know, when you're a new coach coming in, you're always trying to feel your way through the, you know, the new group and, and, and how to best help them. And, you know, one of my main goals coming in as a coach was to, to help them enjoy their season. And I knew they'd been through a lot. And so for me, it was, how can I help them enjoy the game? That, that to me, that's, that was cool. Cause that was, that's really what I wanted them to get out of the season was just enjoying it. And, uh, you know, then the winning took place and that helped. <laughs> Matt doesn't like planes very much, so no one was very surprised. I don't think we were that surprised because whenever we had flown there, he was like, guys, like, I don't like flying. Like, I, I don't like it. And then after we won, I think he was like, you know what? Screw it. Like, I'm driving. I'm driving. Literally the entire flight. He's in the last row and he's white knuckled sitting there like this like the entire flight there. So I was I was surprised he even flew in the first place. I think I think Matt went with um, Anshul, right? So they were able to, you know, drive home and take the trophy. And of course, of course, Matt is taking pictures at every <laughs> state sign. And I think that that was, it was a lot of fun just like seeing him send in the pictures. Um, <laughs> but I'm also like glad that he didn't have to fly. <laughs> it's good for him.
So I think, you know, it was really like a culmination of all the hard work that you put in ever since you start playing volleyball. And it was like, oh my gosh, you know, like I made it. Like this is what, this is what I've worked so hard for.